Sup, nerds. Theo here. Heard we were talking about Next.js. So for those who don't know me, I am a software dev. I used to be mostly backend doing video infrastructure stuff at Twitch, moved over to front end, built a lot of React.js, Next.js, TypeScript, and GraphQL type applications. I found myself moving all over the stack, leaned really heavily into front end for a few years, but then Next.js just grabbed me and forced me back into full stack. The main reason that Next was able to do that is the controversial title that I'm here to talk about. Next.js is a backend framework. What? Isn't Next that React thing for building websites and web apps? Yeah, it is. And a lot of what makes Next what it is, is its qualities as a backend framework. First, we need to understand backend and frontend. The way I choose to break it down is thinking of backend as the servers and computers we own as developers, corporations, and providers of a service whereas front end are the client devices and the codes that run on our user's device. The front end is whatever interface the user is using to communicate to and from your servers, and the servers are the things that provide the code for that interface and the data that is loaded within it. Backends do a lot. They do everything from sending emails to handling requests, returning data, HTML, and anything or nothing else. They process events, they process non-events, they read data from databases, they write data to databases, and so much more. Really, like, hard to do much of anything without a backend nowadays. Which is why it's a good thing that most of what we have here is doable within Next.js without too much effort. Let's think about things as a spectrum, where on one side we have our database, or whatever the source of truth for our data is, and on the other side we have a user that we are trying to render content for. And interface with. We can break up a lot of things on this spectrum where we have whatever's accessing the database, whatever's processing the request and shaping the data, whatever's authorizing the request when it's made, whatever's sending the HTML to the user and whatever the contents of that HTML are, as well as whatever runs updates on the client. I just said React here. Don't read too much into it. If we look at technologies like Create React App, they only take over once the HTML has hit. Usually with a project using Create React App or another single page app framework, there is an empty HTML page with just a script tag. The script tag loads, fetches the right JavaScript, runs, and then fills the page with content based on whatever that JavaScript data, or whatever that JavaScript chooses to render and whatever data that JavaScript fetches. On the other side, we have solutions like PHP, which care about everything up to when the HTML is sent. They are great ways to generate HTML, but once you want the contents of that page to update, they kind of shrug and say that's up to you with solutions like jQuery to be built on top. There are new solutions nowadays like Astro that take the same goal of PHP, which is turn data into HTML as effectively as possible while bringing in modern dev tools from the JavaScript ecosystem. There's obviously also tools like Ruby on Rails that were a little more cohesive, focused on how you interface with the database directly and how the shape of that works, as well as the models for creating views from those things. None of these solutions consider what happens after the page renders. Astro, at the very least, has ways built in to include stuff like Preact, React, Solid, Svelte, or whatever other client-side JavaScript frameworks you choose to run. But Astro's goal, ultimately, is to generate HTML for you. This is where Next.js gets so interesting, though. Because what makes Next.js different from Create React App is that it kind of covers the whole spectrum. Wouldn't be a proper conference talk if it wasn't out of date by the time I hit end recording. So quick interruption to drop a huge new development in the React world. React is now a backend framework as well. Yeah, this change is huge. For those who don't know, React just dropped this new RFC on us titled First Class Support for Promises and Async Await. What does that actually mean? What this actually means is... We now, on server components, can define them as async and await random backend stuff before we return the code. And React will be smart enough to do the right thing, send HTML and instructions down to the user without actually sending them the backend code, just the results of what is hit here. This is magic. This means that so much of the boilerplate that we have been writing, even things that seem basic like defining API endpoints, is no longer necessary because you can call the code you need in your component itself. Magic, this is backend. We're all going to have to understand backend now if we're going to be using this, but yeah. Super cool to see React jumping on the bandwagon of backend first development for front end applications. 
This is super exciting, and I am sure that Next has awesome plans on how to integrate this in the framework. Anyways, back to the rest of the talk, because I have other things to talk about, I think. So yeah, over there. Because what makes Next.js different from Create React App is that it kind of covers the whole spectrum. It runs backend code to generate HTML and generates a JavaScript bundle that the client runs to navigate, keep the page up to date, and run the React code that makes the application feel like an application. Next.js does a lot of things in order to make this happen. The first part is that it, it does generate HTML. Each page you go to in a Next.js app is a unique page with unique HTML being generated for it, either through get server side props, which is every request that is made generates some HTML, or get static props, which is on build a page is generated. We also are able to handle requests and responses for everything from JSON to images to whatever else through the pages slash API directory, which allows us to make a JavaScript or TypeScript file, export a function, and process a request and response just like we're in Express. Generally, there are few problems you can't solve in the pages API directory. I have done everything from webhook management for Stripe events to caching image responses to processing crazy amounts of data all in the silly pages slash API directory. You also have the opportunity to create redirects, middleware, and so much more using the new things that Next.js is regularly introducing. Middlewares allow you to run some code on the edge before a request makes it to your servers, and redirects allow you to do all sorts of crazy things, combining Next.js projects with other hosted solutions to build increasingly complex applications on top of a very simple foundation. Where does this break down, though? I would argue that the points where this fails are not points in Next, rather are points in the serverless and stateless mindset that Next.js really encourages you to think within. Dev wrote this awesome response to a tweet I made about why aren't you using Next.js and even went as far as to draw a diagram. And this diagram highlights one of the most important things to know when you go into building serverless stateless Next.js applications. When your request has been responded to, your serverless function dies. So if I have a user make a request to get their payment information and I want to respond to that immediately, but I notice it's a little out of date. So on the back end, I want to go do some processing after I've responded. In these mindsets and in these frameworks, I'm required to block the response until all my processing is done and then respond to the user because once I've sent a response, that Lambda is about to die at any point. Whereas with a stateful backend, when you're actually running a server, you choose when you respond and you choose when you process and those can be different things at different times. It is much more complexity to worry about because those background functions could end up blocking the next user's request and now you have to worry about scaling that in that way it's a, a trade-off in both directions but generally speaking if you're able to go stateless the benefits to your architecture and the simplicity of your design are unreal so let's look at some problems and whether or not they fit these different mindsets because it truly varies how much compute you can block on, depending on what you're building, how you're building it, and what the expectations are for the product you're making and for your users. Let's break this down by serverless ready and not serverless ready. The serverless ready category, we have everything from page requests, to GraphQL endpoints, authentication, webhooks, API calls, and so much more. Anything that can be broken down to request response in its simple fashion it's probably going to work pretty well in serverless land. There will obviously be exceptions, but if your backend focus is primarily request response, the patterns Next.js provides can help you build simpler solutions to those problems. Whereas in the not serverless ready world, we have things like WebSockets, cron jobs, event queues, large file storage, and lots of other things I'm not including here. Generally though, I think it'd be fair to rename this section, things that scare Theo because all of these have caused me hell in the past and all of these are not easy problems to solve. So how do we solve them? What do we do to handle these problems when we have them in our Next.js environments and our Next.js applications? Well, thankfully, all of these have really compelling solutions created by the community and third-party providers. WebSockets, we have Pusher, LiveBlocks, Ably, PubNub. With cron jobs, we have everything from GitHub Actions, letting you build it into your code base directly, to providers like Zeppelin and Upstash, letting you call an endpoint to define a new cron. And that cron can even call your Next.js service, building a pretty simple relationship where a user triggers an action that creates a cron on Zeppelin, which then triggers our service back whenever the interval is hit. We also have event queues 
which are very well provided nowadays. SQS is obviously the standard with AWS. But we also have Zeppelo, Upstash, and many more. And for large file storage, you're probably already using S3. But if you're posting to S3 directly from your backend, you are eating a lot of network cost you don't need to. S3 pre-signed URLs are super underrated, where you can create a URL, send that to the user from your backend, and now that user can post a file directly to S3 without having to go through your server first. This is almost always the correct way to use S3, and it will make your life a lot simpler and your network costs a lot lower if you're not processing each and every file a user uploads. Next.js is where your users and your server meet. It is very important to be considerate of the relationship between your server and your client. And Next.js blurs the lines between the two in a way that makes iteration and building exactly what you need for your users and building the perfect backend for your front end incredibly trivial. Next.js is the best backend framework to serve your React application because instead of generating a traditional HTML page, like Rails does, like PHP does, and to an extent like Astro does, Next is focused on creating a great React environment, both on the server and on the client. The big part of why this is so special is because Next.js is a backend framework. Really appreciate you all for taking the time to watch this one. I have another version of this talk on my YouTube I did forever ago that's kind of out of date. Really excited about the announcements today that are going to push all of these things forward further. Thank you again. Really appreciate this. Peace, nerds.